Hi Booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I am coming to you with a very requested video and that is a digital book haul and this is for the month of June of 2020. So these are all the books that I purchased digitally in June, um, including audiobooks. So ebooks and audiobooks. Now there are 30 plus books in this haul. So not necessarily going to get into what each and every one of them are about, but there will be a full list in the description box below of every book that I mention, and of course I will be popping all of the covers up here as well so you guys can see them. If I know a bit about something, I will talk about them. So originally when I was putting this together, I thought I would separate this based on the genre of book, for example. And then I realized that mm, I didn't really like the way that that was working, so I actually sorted this by how I purchased them because if you guys know me, you know that I am big on deals. The Kindle daily deals, the monthly deals that Kindle puts out, anytime there's a sale, that's what I jump on. And I I find it sometimes difficult to pay full price for ebooks because sometimes they are ridiculously expensive. Um, sometimes they're not. There are a lot of great free and dollar and dollar ninety nine books there for, out for the Kindle across all genres, but. If it's, you know, if I see something go on sale, I will happily snatch it up. So we're going to start off with the books that I actually paid full price for. So the first one I have is Upstairs, Downstairs, Temptation by Janice Maynard. This is the second book in the uh, the Men of Stone River series, and it's a contemporary novel, and it's from the Harlequin Desire line. So this one, I do follow the author on Instagram, and they were talking about the fact that, like, I follow a bunch of Desire authors on, on, not on Instagram, excuse me, on Facebook, and about, you know, sales and, you know, encouraging people to, to support their authors and things like that, and yes, so I went ahead and I actually pre-ordered a couple of the Desire novels, and this was one of them. So I did have, end up paying full price for this, but still, it was only $4.99, so it's not like a ridiculously expensive um, ebook. still actually cheaper than the print copy, so. And then the other one, two, three, four, five books that I'm going to mention, the next five, are all what I would consider to be the UK chiclet kind of books, which I absolutely love, but the full price for each of these was only $0.99. Cents. So note that I'm not going to be giving you the prices for everything on this, I'm just letting you know for these next ones especially if you're interested I believe they're only a dollar so and I don't recall them being like as a sale price that is I believe their full price so like I said I got five of these UK chiclet novels because I just think they're absolutely delightful and the first one is The Road Trip by Suzanne O'Leary who does not love a good road trip romance Summer at Buttercup Beach by Holly Martin I have read her before and I really like her stuff and perfect summertime book Christmas in Silver Falls by Jenny Hale. Jenny Hale has been a hit or miss author with me, and I have liked some of her stuff. Another, I think a couple that I read by her I didn't absolutely love, but for 99 cents, I am absolutely willing to give this one a try. Um, Those Summer Nights by Mandy Baggett. Um, this one, again, it's I'm in a summertime kind of mood, and this one popped up and I said, okay. Um, and those, uh, no, what's the last one? Oh. A Cornish Cottage by the Sea by Jane Linfoot. This one looks absolutely delightful as well. Had to pick all these up. Again, they were all 99 cents. So maybe check Amazon. Prices may vary, I guess. I don't know. But see if you can pick them up for the same price if you're interested. And the last one that I paid full price for, again, this one was relatively cheap. It's only $2.99. It was only $2.99. It came out last Christmas, I believe. Um, I seem to be like Christmas or summer books. <laughs> Well, if you watched my video yesterday, you know that Christmas in July is coming, so maybe a couple of these Christmas books might interest you. So this one popped up as a book I might like, and I, I was really drawn in by the cover. And it's Vacation by Jane Green. I don't think I've ever read a Jane Green novel before. This one I would consider to be more of a women's fiction novel. It's about a couple that's already married. You know, they met and fell in love, and it was a whirlwind romance, and they got married. And now it's like nine years later, and it's right around the holidays, and they have two kids, and her husband spends all of his time sitting on the couch drinking beer, um, you know, when he's not at work. And then he finds out that he has gotten, is getting transferred by his job to a new city, and it's like a permanent relocation. So the two of them decide to do a, a separation, a trial separation, to see how it goes, and the story goes from there. So yeah, it sounds good. I am very, very interested in it. Again, the cover just absolutely drew me in. 
um, from the simplicity of the cover, and I am really looking forward to this one. I, I'm really going to try my best to get it read this Christmas season. So the next big bunch of books here that I have are the Kindle monthly deals. You guys know I mention on the, the first day of every month, I go on Kindle, I look at the monthly deals, and I add all the ones that interest me to a separate wish list on Amazon. And then as the fancy strikes me, if I'm in the mood to buy something, you know, we all have those days we've had a rough day and it's just like, oh, I need some retail therapy. So to go on and spend 99 cents or, you know, $2 on a book, very easy to do. So all of these, there's a bunch of them, all came from, like I said, the monthly deals. So these will no longer be on sale to my understanding as of the date that this video goes up. So the first one we have is 10 Kisses to Scandal by Vivian Lauret. This is book number two in the Misadventures of Matchmaking series, and it's a historical romance. Not familiar with the series, not familiar with this author, but I do love a good historical romance, so I had to pick this one up. Happy Trail by Daisy Prescott. This is book number one in the Park Ranger series, and this is a contemporary, a contemporary romance. Now, there are a bunch of these coming out now that might look familiar to you, that the covers resemble the Winston Brothers series by Penny Reed. These books are all published like independently by Penny Reed and they are all set within the world of the Winston Brothers but they're written by different authors and I really want to try this one. Now I didn't realize like I bought it and didn't notice that this is also available on Kindle Unlimited so if you want to read it on on KU you absolutely can if you don't want to buy it but it just sounded really cute and I'm such a fan of the Winston Brothers series and clearly you know Penny Reed has given the thumbs up for this so looks really delightful. Um, One in a Million by Lindsay Kelk. This is another contemporary romance. I believe I had this on an anticipated reads maybe a year or so ago. And I believe it's about a woman who is trying to up the, the noticeability of some new up and coming star and starts his social media or something to do with social media. Um, but I am interested. I've heard a lot of good things about Lindsay Kelk. And again, I saw this one come up on the daily deal and I said, okay, or not deal, uh, mo the monthly deals. Then we have Death Over Easy by Maddie Day. This is book number five in a country store mystery series. It's a cozy mystery series. I believe I have the newest one from NetGalley. I talked about it in my Christmas anticipated reads video that came out a week or so ago um, of another book by her, like a, a, the Christmas one in this series that's coming out this, uh, this fall. So I am interested in this series. It, the cover sound, or the, the title sounded cute. It's a cozy mystery. Um, Twist of Fate by Jill Shalvis. Uh, Heartbreaker Bay book number 8.5, a contemporary romance. This is, as you can tell from the cover, is part of this like ongoing imprint series called A Thousand and One Nights, which is just short novellas in many different series. Tons of different authors have written for this like Heather Graham and Lexi Blake and uh, Jennifer L. Armantrout I have seen, Jennifer Proby I have seen. So, you know, usually, sometimes, not usually, but sometimes if a series has a novella in it, it will be published under this, this kind of cover area. So I do like it in one aspect because it's, it, you know for sure that it's a novella, but on the other side, it, it's kind of hard sometimes to tell if it's actually part of a series. Now, the crew of Hunter's uh, novellas are all written as part of this A Thousand and One Nights. And those you can kind of tell that they would be part of the crew of Hunters because the covers are very dark and they seem very foreboding. But where something like Heartbreaker Bay is so light and cheerful that I don't know if it lends itself well to this. But C'est la vie. I am interested in reading it. It's Jill Chavez. I had to pick it up. Um, and the next one is um, The Lullaby Sky by Carolyn Brown. I'm a big fan of Carolyn Brown's writing. Anything that she writes, pretty much, I want to pick up. So I saw this one and snagged it. Uh, My Kind of Christmas by Janet Daly. This is book number one in the Christmas Tree Ranch series. It's a contemporary romance. It's about a guy, I think, who owns a Christmas tree farm. There's a hot Christmas cowboy on the cover and a dog. <laughs> if I didn't pick this one up, I'd be concerned that I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> I had to have this one. Um, speaking of the Thousand and One Nights books, the next in the Crew of Hunters uh, novellas, which is Blood Night by Heather Graham, number 29.5 in The Crew of Hunters. And of course, it's a paranormal romance. I do, you guys know, I, I'm, I love this series so, so much. 
Um, then we have A Gathering of Secrets by Linda Castillo. I was very excited to see this one. It's book number 10 in the Kate Burkholder series. Um, I think I'm up to book three in this series now. And it is a mystery thriller series set in Amish country. And our main female lead, she's a police officer or the sheriff in town. And she is former Amish. And a lot of, you know, bad things tend to befall the poor residents in this town. And it is a fantastic series. It is very gruesome, very gory, very dark. But it's still extremely well written and really, really good. Um, then I have A Cup of Holiday Fear by Ellie Alexander. Book number 10 in a Bake Shop mystery series. This is, of course, another, another cozy mystery. A Christmas cozy mystery. I couldn't say no to that. Um, I have heard about this author before, but I haven't read her. So I'm very, very interested to get to this one. Sounds delightful. And A Steel for Christmas by Brenda Jackson. This is book number nine in the Forged and Steel, Steel series. Say that three times fast. Another contemporary romance. And this one, I believe, was part of the... I'm going to say it wrong, and I do apologize. Um, Kamani series from Harlequin Imprint, which was a... Um, Authors of Color series, and um, it was all black authors, I believe, and black characters, but they, for some reason, a couple years ago, they got rid of this imprint. And now a lot of those authors are moving over to the regular line, if you will, or the other lines, I shouldn't say the regular lines, the other lines, which I personally, like, I, I'm i sad to see the fact that this series or this imprint that was solely for black authors is gone. But I do, on another hand, love the fact that they are merging them into the to the other lines. And we're getting more diverse within, like, the Desire line and the um, Special Edition line. And, you know, all of those that they are getting much more diverse. And I do love seeing that because that's what we need. And it makes me super happy. So, yeah. So this one was originally published as another imprint but they have changed the cover and are re-releasing it now, and I'm looking forward to getting to it. It's Brenda Jackson. You can't go wrong with a Brenda Jackson. And then last but not least, this is a nonfiction novel, and I have had my eye on this book for years. I heard it mentioned once on a podcast, and again, if you guys know me, you know I have a thing with Alaska. I, I want to go to Alaska. I don't want to live there. I just want to go there and see it, but I want to, like, I love reading about Alaska, and this book is called, If You Lived Here, I Know Your Name. And this is by Heather Lendy, I believe is how you say her name. And this is a memoir of her living in a small Alaskan town. And I just love the title and the cover. And it says, News from Small Town Alaska is what it is subtitled. And like I said, I've had this book on my radar for years, and I've had it sitting on a wish list. And when I saw it pop up on a monthly deal, I snagged it so fast. It was like the first book I picked up. And yeah, I am super excited about getting to this one. I have it, I think, earmarked perhaps for nonfiction November. So we shall see. There's actually two books on here that I have earmarked for, earmarked, excuse me, earmarked, earmarked for nonfiction November. So now, <clears throat> I told you guys there was a lot of books on this. The next one we have are the daily deals. So you get the emails every day from Amazon. These are the books that are on sale, blah, blah, blah. I found a few of them, so I decided to pick them up. The first one is Wedding Cake Murder by Joanne Fluke, book number 19 in the Hannah Swenson series. It's another cozy mystery series. I'm slowly working my way through this series. I pick up the books when I can, if I see them cheaply. Um, 20 Wishes by Debbie Maycomer. You can't go wrong with a Debbie Maycomer. And this is book five in the Blossom Street series, which I know is a much beloved series by Debbie Maycomer fans. And it's actually surprisingly a series I have not read yet. Surprisingly, because it takes place in an inning shop. How have I not read this yet? <laughs> so I need to get on this series. Then we have The Killing Edge by Heather Graham. This is a reprint of an old book that she put out years ago. So I snap snagged this one. And Steel Resolve by B.J. Daniels. This is book number one in the Cardwell Ranch Montana Legacy series. And this is a desire. No, that's not a de desire. It's a Harlequin intrigue, so it's a romantic suspense novel. That's what B.J. Daniels does. It's what she's known for. She is fabulous. Then, <laughs> Harlequin had a big sale. <laughs> um, it was on their eBooks, and it was at the Harlequin website, and it was on Amazon or Nook or wherever you would buy your eBooks from. It doesn't have to necessarily be Amazon. But they had over 250 of their books on for a dollar ninety nine each, and they were newer publications, like newer releases essentially. So 
As much as I love Harlequin, I will not buy ebooks from their website, mainly because I really do not like the way that you read the ebooks, that you have to download this other app, and I have had more than, um, like, I've had so many problems with the app, and so have a lot of other people. I love the way that they used to do it, where you used to be able to download it, and then you could front load it or back load it into your Kindle or whatever, you know, device it is that you chose to use, but they've taken that away, and now you've got to use, like, this special app, and I just don't need, I, especially because all of my e-reading is done on my Kindle um, Paperwhite, and I can't put apps on that, so... That's the problem. And I do not like carrying this big honking thing around to read ebooks. So all that being said, I bought all of these on Amazon. So nice and easy. They popped right up on here, which is great. So we have one night with his, what I tried to do is pick one from each of the different imprints just to make it fun. So I've got one night with his rival by Robin Grady. This is book number two in the about that night series. And it's a desire novel. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover. We have The Best Intentions by Michelle Major. This is book number one in the Welcome to Starlight series, and it is a special edition novel. Uh, this one looks super cute. I'm a big fan of this author. When I saw Michelle Major had one on sale, I snatched it up. Speaking of another favorite author, and this one was mentioned in a Harlequin Anticipated Reads video, so I had to pick it up because the cover just makes me super happy. And it's Enchanted by the Rodeo Queen by Melinda Curtis. Book number five in the Mountain Monroe series. This uh, is a heartwarming um, book, imprint, and this is a clean romance. For those of you who would like to know, this is the Harlequin clean romance line. Um, then we have Tempting the Governess by Julia Justice. This is book number two in the Cinderella Spinster series, a historical, of course. Um, Conflicting Evidence by Lena Diaz. This is book number three in the Mighty Mackenzie series, and it is an intrigue novel. I love the intrigue novels. The Prince and the Wedding Planner by Jennifer Fay. Uh, book number one in the Bartoloni Legacy series. This is a Harlequin romance, one of their imprints. The Rangers Reunion Threat by Laura Lacombe. This is book number three in the Rangers of Big Bend series, and this is part of the Romantic Suspense line. do like these ones very much as well. Then we have The Texans Promise by Jolene Navarro, book number three in the Cowboys of Diamondback Ranch series. This is a love-inspired uh, love inspired novel, which is their faith-based fiction. And yeah, I am looking forward to this one. And then last but not least, another book that appeared on one of my anticipated reads that really made me interested was Border Breach by Darlene L. Turner. And this is the love-inspired suspense line. So their inspirational line. So Yes, this one I was really interested in. And the last three books, only three more to go, you guys, are all audiobooks. So I got an email the other day from audible.ca. I do have membership with audible.com um, because I also have the Audible Escape Package, but I do actually have a membership as well with audible.ca because then I can actually get them, like the credits end up being a bit cheaper, if you will, because... It's $14.95 for a credit on audible.com. That's in U.S. funds. It's $14.95 for a credit on audible.ca. That's in Canadian funds. So it's actually cheaper on .ca for me. Um, but they do not have the ability at this point to link your Audible Escape package with your .ca membership. So I did keep the... Dot com and it just gives me an extra credit every month. I'm debating on getting rid of it at this point, so I might do that and just pay full price for the escape package because that I really do use a lot. But anyway, all that being said, um, I got an email from audible.ca and they are having a big Canada Day sale because Canada Day is tomorrow. Today is the day that this video is going live. <laughs> Happy Canada Day, by the way, <laughs> to all my fellow Canadians. So a great way to um, share that is they had a whole bunch of Canadian audio, audio titles on sale for $7, $6.95 a piece. So I immediately went ahead and I purchased three of them that sounded the most interesting to me. So the first one is The Quintland Sisters by uh, Shelley Wood. This is a historical fiction novel. It is a fictionalization of the Dion Quintuplet story. For those of you who have not heard of that before, the Dion Quintuplets were born in the 1930s in Calendar, Ontario, which is about three, I don't know my time, three, two, three hours north of me, not far from North Bay, Ontario. 
and they are identical quintuplet sisters, and they were put on display, literally taken from their parents, and put on display in a zoo of sorts, where the public paid money to come and see them. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really interesting Canadian story of what happened to these poor girls, and this is a fictionalization of it. Ever since I heard about them, I've not been obsessed with them, but I'm always very interested to read more about them. I believe two of them are still alive at this point. But of course, it was during the Great Depression, and, you know, people needed something, but they would travel from so far. And, and I'm not, you know, this isn't making light of it at all, but for those of you who are Simpsons fans, you might remember the episodes when um, Apu had the, uh, was it the octuplets, the eight babies? And they did that where they had them, like, like in a circus, that was that was a takeoff of what happened to the Dion quintuplets. I mean, not to that extreme, of course, but it was it was to that point. If you're interested, look it up. So I'm very excited about this one. I believe I have a physical copy of this, but for seven dollars for the audio, I couldn't say no. And the other one I got is another historical fiction. I do really like my historical fiction novels, and this is *The Home for Unwanted Girls* by Joanne Goodman. This is about a girl, I think, in the 1950s, who ends up getting pregnant, and she's unmarried. So at the time. She had the baby, and they took the baby, and they put the baby up for adoption. She really didn't have any say in it. And then now she is trying to find her child or her daughter. So it sounds really good. I am super excited about this one, about getting to it. And then the last one is I also mentioned another book I have earmarked to possibly read for nonfiction November, and that is The Never Ending Present by Michael Barclay. And this is the story of Gord Downey and the Tragically Hip. So the nonfiction novel, The Tragically Hip, are a huge Canadian band. I am personally not a absolute fan of them. My husband has seen them a couple times in concert, but I am very familiar with their music growing up here. You know, it was played a lot on the radio, and, you know, I'm familiar with who they are. So Gord Down, uh, Dowie, I believe is that, that's how you say his name, he passed away a couple of years ago from brain cancer, and he was a phenomenal singer. And um, so this is kind of their story and their influence on Canada and Canadian pop culture and they really did help a lot of indigenous people as well, especially the lead singer, you know, fighting for their rights and things like that. So that's pretty much what that is about. I'm very interested. But the other thing that tipped me over the edge for wanting to get this one on audio, for any of you who are around my age, your late 30s, early 40s, who grew up in Canada and watched much music, <laughs> this is narrated by Strombo. <laughs> George Strombonopoulos um, narrates this and I... I adore him. I, I still follow him on Instagram. <laughs> I, I had a crush back in the day. I still might now. <laughs> we won't get into that. But yeah, he narrates this and I'm just like, okay, that was just, uh, you know, icing on the cake. For those of you who are American who don't know who he is, he was on, was it CNN for a bit? You might have seen him on that. But he also um, co-hosted Hockey Night in Canada for a while. And all my Canadian is coming out now, isn't it, you guys? <laughs> a. And, um, but he was a VJ on Much Music, which was our version of MTV. And, um, you know, he interviewed all kinds of musical celebrities back in the day. And yeah, so anyway, um, it's part of my growing up here in the city of Toronto. So anyway, um, yeah, so I got that one too. So long video. I'm sorry, you guys, I went through this as quickly as I possibly could. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you've read any of these books, what did you think about them? Because I would love to know that too. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.